Welcome to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. Are you ready to discover some niche business ideas that actually work? Well, it's time for a motivational kick to jumpstart your next big idea. Here's your host, Spencer Haas. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Haas from nichepursuits.com. And today I actually have a guest on the podcast. I have Travis Jameson. He owns, well, a couple of different businesses. Uh, He has an Amazon FBA business that we're going to talk about quite a bit. But he also owns amztracker.com, which is a service that, of course, will help you track your sales ranking and keyword rankings, but does a lot more as well. It does product reviews or helps you get product reviews and a few other things. And we actually talk about this during the podcast so you can hear more. But Travis also owns SupremacySEO.com, and so he has an SEO company uh, that he's run for a while, and he's done some other things that, again, we do talk about as well. But I'm excited to have Travis on the podcast because, because he has a lot of knowledge in regards to Amazon FBA. He's actually grown a business there. He's actually doing about a million dollars a year with his Amazon FBA business. And so we're going to dive into keyword research and how to pick a niche and then certainly how to optimize your product descriptions and titles and a lot of other great tips. A couple of things in here that I actually want to go and apply into my own business, such as ranking your own product, Amazon product pages in Google and things like that. But in addition to his Amazon FBA business, like I mentioned, he owns AMZ Tracker. This is a product that I've used for quite a while before I even knew Travis. I started using AMZ Tracker to track the sales rank and keyword rankings for my Kindle eBooks. And then when I started doing Amazon FBA, I started using that and I've used the review service and I love it. It's really easy to do promotional reviews, to connect with a lot of real life Amazon reviewers and to help launch your products. And so I am an affiliate for AMZ Tracker. I recommend it. If you want to check it out, it's nichepursuits.com slash AMZ Tracker. And so with that, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the interview. I think it's a good one. Hopefully you enjoy it. Travis has a lot of great tips to share. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Niche Pursuits podcast. I'm of course Spencer Hawes, your host with nichepursuits.com. And today I've got a guest. I've got Tra- Travis Jamison with us from AMZ Tracker and he can share some of his other businesses as well. But let's just welcome him on. Travis, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, buddy. Yeah, thanks for coming on. You know, like I mentioned, we met because I actually was using your product AMZ Tracker and you reached out to me and sort of introduced me to the product and I said, Hey, I'm already using it. Um, and I, and I love it. I think it's a great product. Um, but to give people an idea of what sort of entrepreneurial background you have, I know you've started a couple of businesses. Can you just give a quick summary of what your entrepreneurial background is? Yeah. Um, so I've definitely been quite a, a serial entrepreneur. I've just started company after company after company. I'm probably most well known for the my SEO business, Supremacy SEO. I've been rambling about SEO now for a few years. I also, more behind the scenes, have had a dietary supplement company, like vitamins and stuff like that. And that's where I started um, many years back. And, and I have s- several of those. I've, I've sold a couple of those as well. And now I'm actually building more as we speak. And through that is how I kind of transitioned into Amazon. Yeah, so there's... Tons of stories I'm sure we could share. Um, sounds like you've done a lot of things uh, with a lot of your other businesses. I don't, I don't know. I feel like maybe I should ask, like, what has been your biggest success so far in all the ventures you've started? So far, de- definitely the, the – it's, it's kind of hard to put it. Um, they've all, they've all kind of worked out in their own little way. Mm-hmm. Uh, financially, some of them would be much bigger quicker and then – some of them, like the SEO business, has just been you know, lasting for on and on and on. I would probably say the SEO business is the most successful just because it's put me in touch with more people mm-hmm. um, in all different walks of life and all different businesses and whatnot. And those connections have been invaluable. You know, I became like a trusted figure that people would reach out to and like 
ask business questions. And from that, everything kind of just flowed down the mountain. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And of course, if people want to check that out, it's supremacyseo.com, right? Yeah. Yep. We, uh, we ramble about SEO at least once a week on there. Yeah, no, sounds good. So I do want to dive into your Amazon FBA business because not only do you run AMZ Tracker, which helps people that are running an Amazon FBA business, you actually have your own Amazon FBA uh, business where you're selling products. Can you give us an idea of what led you to starting that business? The, the FBA business. The, yes. the FBA um, business, yes. So I, I originally had a supplement company several years ago. This is my first business. And... I, I sold it about maybe two and a half years ago now. I sold that company and I knew I wanted to get back into the space. I had, I had done really well, but with that, um, my traffic generation strategies were SEO, of course, and PPC. And, and they worked well, but you know, that's, it's a lot of work. And I, I had a friend, a really good friend of mine, and he was doing some FBA stuff. And he said, you should just check it out, hop on. And I got in there and started applying like my, my SEO mindset for Google, applying it to the Amazon search engine. And from there, saw a massive explosion in my, my new product line's growth. It was, it was just absolutely insane and got hooked. Um, you know, as you're in, the, you're in the same boat, you know, you're a, you're a Google guy and you, you tasted Amazon and you just see how how easy it is in a lot of ways. And they're not, um, they're not like flimsy web properties. It's a real brick and mortar business. Well, not necessarily brick and mortar, but it's like a real business that you can, you can taste and mm -hmm. the traffic and is everywhere. It's just insane. The, the purchasing intent is insane. Everybody just comes on Amazon for one thing to buy yep. and it makes life easy. Yeah, no, it really does. And so is it, uh, is it okay to share what your product is? I, I mean, you alluded to that you started a supplement business. Is it safe to assume that's what you're doing on Amazon then? Yes. Yes. Okay. All, all supplements. I, I wouldn't know how to do other stuff, to be honest. <laughs> you're just so familiar with the space. I mean, that makes sense. You're comfortable. You know that, that market. And so now you're, yeah. you're doing that as well. And it's, it's a good market to be in. I mean, there's, there's great margins in that business. Yeah. And, you know, I've heard that from a lot of people and I can see that. I mean, there's tons of people buying supplements and it's a big market. It's a, you get repeat buyers, right? To, to refill their, their supplements and that sort of thing. But there's also a ton of Absolutely. competition, isn't there? And, a lot. Yeah. A whole and, lot. And they're dirty sometimes too. Right. And so maybe I will save this question for a little bit later, but I want to dive into how how you can stand out from your competition. But before I guess we dive into that, can you give us an idea of how well your Amazon FBA business is doing right now? Yeah. So I, I actually haven't been focusing on it as much the last uh, few months since we first touched base actually, but it's doing just under a million a year right now revenue. Man, that's um, awesome. But, but when I say it's passive, I, I spend maybe two hours a week on it. And I have, I have a guy who, uh, a good friend of mine who works for me, and he spends about 10 to 15 hours a week on it, managing it. So you can do the math there. It's crazy. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And are you willing to share maybe a range of what the profit margins are, are on that? I know a lot of people shoot for like a 50% profit margin after everything. Is that maybe a similar range to what you're trying yeah, to do? Yeah, I think um, after everything, after everything. It's about 50%. Um, you know, so or originally, if you just take the product and then what it's sold for, it's much, much higher. But uh, mm -hmm. you have to account for, like, giveaways and all these fees and all this stuff. So 50% is what it comes to. And I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Oh, yeah. No, that that's huge. And really, I mean, to give people an idea, that I mean, that's a huge profit margin compared to what most people are making when they sell physical products just because of the online nature of it. You, you go to retail stores and anybody else trying to sell a product in Walmart or something, their margins are going to be probably much, much less. Nothing, um, nothing. You know, anybody selling in a physical store is not going to be making 50% for the most part just because of all the infrastructure costs and everything else associated with selling that product. So... 50 and the, is the really mental has, the mental hassle that goes with that. Um, so I I have websites for all my products and whatnot. Um, and originally with my old supplement businesses, you know, I had fulfillment centers, I had 
payment processors and all this stuff. And, and I don't even do it anymore. If you go to my website and click buy now, it takes you to Amazon. Um, I am quite like happy and willing to give up just a little bit of extra profit margin to pay Amazon these fees in order for them to handle everything. You know, they handle most customer service. They handle the payment processing, the shipping. It, it's the place to be. Yeah, it really is. I mean, they, they handle just so much of the business. It makes it really easy. I, I love it. Um, my, my business is growing. I was just going to say, if people have like really low margins, it can't work. Um, because Amazon's fees will matter then. When it's a product like mine with such massive margins, it, it's it's a no-brainer to be, do it. But if I was making one of these, you know, 20% margins normally with my own sites, I would never want to put it on Amazon because I'd be I'd get like 5% margin after that, and that's just that's crazy. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's let's maybe tackle that competition question. Um, Amazon does have a lot of competition, and in particular, I know your market. Uh, has a ton of competitors, so many people coming into that market because probably it has high profit margins and there's a great market. Um, but how do you go about standing out from the crowd? What's worked really well for you to be able to grow a business to about a million dollars a year in a really competitive market? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, the first thing is I would always rather be um, the big fish in the small pond. Um, I, I would I like to be the dominant figure in whatever niche I'm targeting. Uh, so with that, you're never going to see me fighting for like the latest Garcinia pills or colon cleansers and all these things that there's just a million people selling that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've I've personally had a lot of success with that. Uh, I know some of these people in those massive product niches are doing probably a million dollars a month. So it, if they can make it work for them, good power. Like all proud of them. Uh, my strategy has always been around keywords. So uh, as I touched on earlier, I kind of took my SEO brain and applied it to Amazon. And so it just starts with like keyword research, just like, just like with like long tail pro, like you would do that. Um, I would, um, intuitively and with the use of a few different tools and go through there and find these keywords that, uh, have significant volume that have, um, a pressing need. So, uh, I think of the intent behind the buyers. Um, if it's something that just, if they're going to stand by it and go like, yeah, maybe I'd want that. That's not what I'm looking for. But if they go through and they're like, this is a problem and I need a solution, um, that's the type of thing I want. Uh, and then I, I find those with, with low, low competition and make products from there. So I don't start, I don't think of the product first. I find the, the market and then make sure I can make a product that makes a difference in that market. That's how I do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's let's dive into that a little bit more. Um, can you maybe give an example? It doesn't have to be an, like an actual example of your product per se, but if you're doing keyword research, what's maybe the type of keyword? Whether that's you know search volume or you know the the type of phrase that's being used. Like, what's a keyword that if you saw, you would go, "Hey, there's a market here, and it looks like this is a good keyword. I should." you know, maybe build a product around? Who, um, I'd have to ponder on that. Uh, I don't know if I have an awesome answer right off the top of my well, head. Um, so when, when you're researching, are, are you looking at like, what type of search volume are you looking at it? Like if you are okay. going to the Google keyword planner tool, right. That shows Google search volume. Yeah. Are you using that or are you using some other specific Amazon tool? Well, I've used uh, used the Google Volume a lot. That's um, kind of my go-to. Uh, mm-hmm. We actually have that built into our software that Google Volume shows. Also, a, a tool called Term Explorer, which I love. Um, I highly recommend Term Explorer. And then also use um, Merchant Words, which is a, supposedly an Amazon volume tool. Uh, they kind of tweaked around some algorithms, and they, they give hypothetical Amazon search volumes it's not really accurate, but it's a good way to kind of get some general information that I can use. Um, so if you're using Merchant Words, for example, and there's a link where you can buy it for nine bucks a month, it's nothing. Uh, I would go for something that says a hundred thousand a month and up. That's mine. Uh, okay. that's my, that's my starting level. And I, at a, at a keyword that says a hundred thousand a month, if you get a couple of those that you're targeting, 
you can usually make about $100 a day off of that, I would say. Um, now, when it says 100000 a month in merchant words, that is not the equivalent of what you would expect in Google. Like a Google keyword that's 100000 a month is a dream come true. Right. Um, so I, in Google, I would equate it with something like a 3000 um, search a month keyword. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's how I use it. Um, if, if you're just using Google, which is fine, uh, you have to kind of change the, the keyword type. Uh, informational queries are not going to be very valuable in Amazon. Um, people come to Amazon to buy. Um, now, they're, they're not necessarily going to use buying keywords. Like They're not going to say, like, buy Garcinia. Um, they'll just type in Garcinia if they're in Amazon. So you just have to keep this in mind as you're doing the keyword research in Google, uh, but you can still get all the inf info you need just from the Google Keyword Planner. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm just trying to think of, of how we can maybe use these keywords. I mean, there's um, – well, bef before we go into maybe product description and how to you know utilize these keywords – what other steps do you have for actually picking a market or, or picking a product for people that are listening in that don't have, you know, any idea what market they even want to go into? Yeah, let's say they've done some keyword research and they found some, you know, uh, decent keywords based on what you've explained with search volume. What do you do besides that, whether that's directly on Amazon or elsewhere to look at, okay, can I actually get into this market? Should I go after this? All right. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of shit at this because I know my the stuff that I make. I know it so intimately. And also, I mean, I'm supposed to see this like Amazon guru guy, but but I've always focused on the, the actual ranking process of things. Mm -hmm. But I'll give you what I, what I do know. Okay. Um, the, the first thing is, so again, it, for me, it's all based on keywords. That's That's everything I look at for the most part. And the the intent behind the keywords, like how much they need it. Um, and also is the product, are they going to buy it more than once? That's a really awesome win. Uh, I would say probably 25 or at least 20% of all my sales are recurring. People just come back and buy the same thing again. Um, also look at how easily would it be for a competitor to come and like steal your business away. So uh, I see a lot of problems with, uh, People manufacturing, say, something like uh, Bluetooth earbuds or something like that. I hate to be giving away these niches to people, but don't do that when it's hard. Um, they, they come in and they, they get an idea and they go to Alibaba and they find the cheapest person and then a million other people are already making the same product. And so they put it out there and now there's 10 of the exact same product that are all private labeled under their own brand, but it's still the same thing. Um, and stuff like that is very hard to turn into a long-term business mm -hmm. where if you put a little bit more effort, you get something a little, little bit more customized, a little more branded, something that's not as easy to rip off, those tend to last a lot longer. People And, and they sell better. People have more success with them. You can build a brand following instead of just a, you know, a, a cheat. Yeah, so in, in that example of you know wireless Bluetooth headphones or whatever, so – are you saying they should uh, create some unique feature with the headphones or, um, you know, what are, yeah. what are what are other ways perhaps that they can solidify their business a little better? All right. So if it was me, I would pick other products, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. That's what I do. Again, so I'm not going to manufacture Garcinia with some extra dust sprinkled on top. I'm just going to make something else. Uh, but if you're going to do that, yeah, definitely make it something that can stand out, some extra features, uh, a focus on quality can go a long way because there are, there's a lot of crap on Amazon too. Um, and especially the more sellers that get on there that are just searching Alibaba for the cheapest stuff, the more low quality things that are there. Uh, and something with style, uh, I feel like I've seen, you know, I get to see a lot of people's products all the time. And things that have good style, if you're making something that would work with that, really, really seems to do much better over the long term. I, for, if it was any like Bluetooth earbuds, um, if you made it stylish with its own look and stuff like that, people, people like that. It's not the normal generic thing. People can covet that and think that it's, um, something special, something to be proud of. 
Yeah, no, that makes sense. And and I've talked about that actually quite a bit in the past, just the importance of business, of being able to stand out, having something unique. And it's pretty easy to get stuck in that trap with Amazon because uh, of not being unique, because there are so many other people that are just strictly private labeling so many other products and they're doing well. Yeah. You know, right now, but who knows how long that will last. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. That it'd be a lot easier to swoop in and, and, you know, steal somebody's business. Essentially your business could go away almost overnight if you don't have anything unique. Yeah. Um, so, but with, with all that, you know, scary stuff, scary stuff I said, uh, it still can be done with just about anything. Sure. Um, if you do it right, if you know the optimization and you do it better than everybody else, uh, you can still do it. And just just like with Google, if you get to the you know top one and two spots, you're going to get a lot of a lot of traffic if it's a good keyword. Um, so if as long as you can get to those spots and it's doable, you know it can still be wildly profitable, even if it is just some knockoff something. It's not it's not the end of the world. I just would rather people start with a better end in mind, just in case it makes, it makes the whole process easier. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I'm going to jump in and kind of share an update on my products, I guess, if you will. I, I do have oh, two nice. products that are, uh, fairly unique in the fact there's nobody else, you know, selling them and they're doing very well. They're my two best products, uh, by far. I, I then went and created a third product that, I mean, it's a straight private label, exactly what we're talking about. There's 20 other people selling the same thing. Um, just to see if I could do it, but it actually has taken off now and is doing very, very well. Um, so it's very possible, you know, this is a product I still sort of shake my head and go, I don't know why it's doing so well. I mean, I've certainly done things to make it rank well and that's why it's selling, but yeah. I don't know how long it's going to last. Right. So I'll enjoy the money while I can. Don't get me wrong, but so, so there's a lot of things you can do, even if you don't have a unique product. And so let's, let's maybe dive into that. How can people optimize their listing? Let's, you know, take your keywords that, you know, you, uh, have researched. How should people be using those keywords in their product titles, uh, their listings? And, and overall, it, yeah, let's just have a discussion about optimizing the actual listing on Amazon. All right. So this is straight up. On-page SEO for the Amazon search engine. Right. Yep. Uh, I imagine lots of your listeners are very familiar with on-page SEO for Google. So just kind of keep that same mindset and take it over to Amazon with some different tweaks, and uh, you'll it'll make life much easier. Definitely. Um, so the uh, probably the most so you have your keywords that you're going to focus on, and just like in Google, like the most important part is the title. The title is everything. Uh, now with Amazon, you have a lot more, a lot more room. So how do I say this? You're, you're going to optimize for two things. One is going to be the keywords, of course, because Amazon's a search engine. You have to tell it the keywords you're focusing on. And the second is going to be for the users themselves. Uh, so we'll start with the users in mind. When, when somebody types in a keyword, so they type in Garcinia, and then they land on the page. They have 16 other products to look at. And I, I feel like in Amazon, the they probably will scroll through the search results a little bit more than Google in a lot of t times. Uh, so you have to stand out. Um, people put these boring, boring titles, and it doesn't work. So the first thing I would recommend is to make it something exciting. You know, put why yours is unique, um, something that stands out, that type of stuff. That tends to really influence the click-through rates, we believe. And the click-through rates are vastly important. Uh, now, for the, for the keyword stuff, you'd want to put as many keywords as you can. So with uh, the latest changes in July, Amazon limits that to 200 characters, which is still a lot. If you've seen these Amazon titles sometimes, they're just massively long. Uh, it looks annoying, but it works for rankings. The more keywords you can put in that title, the better. Um, and preferably in the same order. So if you're selling an iPhone 6 case, um, you would want to put that in the exact same order. You don't want to put 6 case iPhone. But in Amazon, uh, if you put 6 case Amazon or 6 case iPhone, it would still help Amazon some, just not as much. That's a big ramble, I know. <laughs> no, that's good. Definitely good tips. So you still do recommend 
I mean, kind of in a way, it's like keyword stuffing your your product title, right? I mean, it, uh, it, yes, it still that's, works that's is what you're saying. Stuff it. Stuff it. Um, put uh, So I like to put every little long tail I can imagine in it. So if I'm doing an iPhone 6 case, again, I'm going to put blue, slim, uh, sturdy, strong, all these different things that um, people might search for. Include that in there because the Amazon search engine is far more basic than Google, and that plays such an important part. Uh, again, you want to make it, you want to make the title look sexy so that people click it and it stands out. But to put as many keywords as you can, stuff it. Um, but you don't need to repeat the keywords. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't put iPhone 6 case twice in a title. It's just not going to help. It's just going to take up space that you could use for other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Now, I know also on the back end of Amazon, you're allowed to input additional keywords, right? Um, any tips there for um, types of keywords that people should be putting on the back end versus the front end? Yeah. Um, so the, the first thing is that there are different uh, opinions on um, using keywords. Some people say you just need to use your keyword once in an Amazon listing. And some people say you should leave, use your keyword in every available section of an Amazon listing. Mm-hmm. No one knows for sure. My opinion and the data that I see that backs it up, and it's a lot, is that you should put your keyword in every section. Okay. Uh, so with that, in, in the back end, um, it's a great place to put your competitors' names because uh, you can start ranking for them. It's a very sneaky, easy way, and nobody's going to know it. It's not going to show on your page. This is like, these are like the equivalent of meta keywords in Google. Like it's just not going to be seen. You can't even see it in the, uh, in the source code. Yeah, you know what? I'm actually glad you brought that up because I just re- sort of realized that. I had that like aha moment just about a week ago. This gives you an idea of how much I study Amazon. Like I sort of just learning this as I go. I, anyways, I'm kind of a loner in that way. I, I learn from these interviews actually, to be honest. This oh, is where I, I get most of my education. But uh, I found that out because I did a search for my keyword and somebody was ranking um, or, or I did a search for a competitor and somebody was ranking that wasn't even selling obviously what people were searching for. But I was like, you know, the only way they would show up is if they had put their competitor's brand name in the back end of their keywords. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's actually a, a good little tip for people that are listening in, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to start trying that. I haven't done that yet, but uh, I think oh, that's works. something I should be doing, yeah. And uh, and also the, the back end keywords, you have, I forget the amount of characters, you have a fair amount of space. It's a, it's a good spot to put um, all the keywords that don't, naturally fit in there. They're kind of awkward. Um, so you can put singular and plural versions of everything. Uh, again, the Amazon search engine is not near as smart as Google, so it's not going to pick up on that. So you need to tell it. Um, you don't need to put in any commas. Just put a space. I mean, it's going to look weird. It's going to feel weird, but that's that's what you should do. Um, put in every variation, every long tail, every competitor's name, anything you can think of um, that will fit, fit in there. Do it. Um, and it's the same thing with the rest of the places. You also have like the bullet points on Amazon and the, the long form like product description and the product information, all that stuff. Put, put your keywords everywhere. Any keywords you can imagine, put it in all the sections. Mm-hmm. It'll be rewarded from that. Yeah, good tips uh, for sure. That actually gets me thinking about some of my listings as well. Um, wh- what else or, or what additional tips can you give us for – product description other than keywords um, what what role does that play how important is that product description I mean I would assume and at least I've always heard I mean obviously the product title is most important the images are of course very important but then people scroll down and they have this product description how important is that and what are some tips you can share to optimize that section uh, that's probably a really good place to, sh- to share your information, um, especially you might have noticed Amazon's kind of changing the way they display the products, mm-hmm. and the product description is becoming much more much more out there, much more evident. Um, so it's just a great place to sell, like using copywriting type of stuff. Uh, you can also use some very basic HTML, like some uh, spacings, some bold italics and stuff like that. 
And that can really spruce up the way your listing looks. Um, if, you're, if you're not used to that, if you're used to, like, saying using WordPress and just pressing enter and a space happening, it's not going to happen in Amazon. It's just going to be one big, ugly glob of Word. So mm-hmm. you have to use some really basic HTML. Super simple. If you haven't done it before, don't worry. This takes, like, five seconds to learn. Um, so that's a great way. It's a good place to answer some of your customers' questions they might have beforehand. Uh, Again, it's just about selling there. You, you want to put your keywords in it everywhere, uh, but it's more, it's more about selling, making them comfortable to purchase your product in case they had any questions. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So let's go ahead and move into actually launching a product. A lot of what we've talked about is strictly Amazon search engine type tips uh, mm-hmm. using keywords and that sort of thing. But let's say once you've actually got your product listed – and you're ready to go, and it's live, what are your next steps at that point to start getting sales? Uh, so there are all kinds of different strategies. I think the 80-20 of the easiest way to do it that um, pretty much everyone does now is you you need to give products away either for free or at a really big discount um, to product reviewers. And these product reviewers are going to leave a review on Amazon. Now, these aren't um, like fake reviews, for example. You're not paying somebody to to write a review uh, because that's against Amazon's terms of service, and they'll bust you for that stuff. Uh, It's it's a a product review, but so reviews are everything on Amazon. Uh, No one wants to buy a product on Amazon without reviews because it's built into the ecosystem. You know, if somebody comes to your WordPress site, They don't really, you know, there's no reviews normally there, so they don't know. They don't have to trust you. But they go to Amazon, everything else has reviews, and your product doesn't. Your product's not going to stand out. And so it's like the chicken or the egg problem. How do you get reviews without sales, and how do you get, you know, sales without reviews? You you can't. And so these product review clubs uh, make it really easy to to launch these things. Um, So that's the first step, getting a lot of reviews. And then with that, you're getting these sales, and sales are – vital for ranking in the Amazon search engine. So it's equally as important as the keywords in the product title is getting sales volume. The Amazon search engine is set up to reward sales. Amazon wants to make the most money they can, and that's how their search engine is programmed. So if you're showing them that you can make them more money than your competitor, you're going to start outranking your competitors. Yeah, absolutely. So let's um – Boy, well, let's let's talk about at least how I get reviews, and I'm sure this is how you get reviews because, well, you've created a service to do that um, with AMZ Tracker, and I will go ahead and you know mention it because it is something that I used before we even connected, and I really love it. I love there's there's a uh, Amazon Review Club on AMZ Tracker. It's really easy to use. You basically uh, copy and paste in some claim codes for Amazon and then you invite, you know, 50 people or however many reviews you want to get and they go in and they actually order your product and and do the review and it's very hands off um, other than what I just mentioned, essentially copying and pasting in those claim codes and uh, the reviews start coming in and it's worked very well for me. Um, So is that essentially what you're doing as well, using your own service? It's exactly what I did. So my own service I designed is like exactly what I wanted for my own products. We, we initially didn't even make it as a, you know, a thing to make a lot of money. It was just something that I wanted for my products to make it easier to sell. And it, it blossomed from there. So that's, that's all I do. Well, that's the main thing I do to, to launch products is that alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just, it just works. And as you can attest, you know, you're, it takes you five minutes to get this stuff set up maybe 10 minutes your first mm-hmm. time and you're done and you you set it up you log in a couple of days later you have all these reviewers requesting to review your product you click a button it sends them the promo code and they order and that's the end of it yeah it really is uh, super easy to use we actually tried out a couple of different services and i guess i won't mention them by name just cuz <laughs> you know, i don't really recommend them but we tried out a couple of others and one in particular it was very much like babysitting the reviewers, you had to email them individually and send them their individual claim code, and there was just a lot of back and forth, and it it uh, took a lot of time to to get any reviews. Um, so I do recommend AMZ Tracker uh, for sure. It's a, it's a great service. Um, so, Thanks. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, I do actually want to talk about 
the reviews and Amazon's terms of service uh, because it, it does say within Amazon's terms of service that it is okay to uh, essentially do these promotional giveaways and get reviews in exchange as long as the reviewer says in the review, hey, I got this product you know, um, at a discount in exchange for this review or something like that. So as yeah. lo- long as it's disclosed, it's it's totally okay with Amazon Terms of Service. However, they recently changed the wording, I guess, of their Terms of Service a little bit. And uh, I actually have the part that they changed. At least I believe this is the part that they changed. It says, uh, you may not intentionally manipulate your product's rankings, including by offering an excessive number of free or discounted products in exchange for a review. So... What are your thoughts on this uh, terms of service change? Just because I know you are in the mix of it and probably have heard a lot. Does that yeah. change our ability to essentially do what we just described? Thankfully, no. Um, it's been pretty much a case of everybody screaming the sky is falling, even though there's been no evidence that the sky is falling. Yeah. Um, so the the people from I Love to Review, they wrote a really great post on this. They reached out to a bunch of like, the Amazon seller admins, or I don't know, whatever you call them, but the people that work at Amazon who know their stuff, and uh, and and asked them about this, and and Amazon was like, no, no, you're, you guys are fine, basically, like you're, you're perfectly allowed to do this. What they were trying to stop is the people who are really abusing the system and trying to manipulate it. So they give um, they give one reviewer several codes and say, you keep on purchasing, keep on purchasing, because you can only review a product once, you know. Otherwise, you're just manipulating the sales rank. Uh, and I, for, I forget what the other thing was. But it was really just people like blatantly um, trying to to rig the systems, not people doing product reviews. Because these are, you know, this is how everybody launches stuff. If people, you know, if a big company launches something, they're going to give some out for product reviews, to, like big reviewers and stuff like that. Amazon even has their own Vine program that does exactly that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that kind of takes into account the other metric that you talked about, that the more sales you get, the better you rank in Amazon. And I guess that's more what this is geared to, that uh, people were trying to get an excessive number of uh, giveaways, not so much to get reviews, but to get a huge bump in their sales rank, right? And yeah. at least, I mean, maybe we don't know, I guess, what they're talking about. But that's certainly part of it is... Uh, to it, uh, again with with this, uh, I, I got a good opinion on this one. Okay. So most most people don't even realize this, but some of the really big sellers um, for some of the big products, including some of the the health products and stuff like that, um, they actually have systems of bots and fake uh, sellers and stuff like that that they they run it through all the time. They're doing these fake sales basically using promo codes. And they're, um, they're, they're not leaving reviews. They're not actually doing reviews because they know they probably get busted doing that. But they're just keeping their sales volume up. And we believe it's actually targeted towards this stuff. That's the same type of thing. They said you can't, you know, they said you can't give um, these promos to the same people over and over. This is what they're doing. These, these bots and these fake accounts or even just people with lots of VPNs and stuff like that. Um, they're just purchasing the same thing over and over to keep the sales rank high. And if they can do an extra fake, you know, 30 sales a day then they can help them stay at the top for these keywords that make them a million dollars a month. That's the type of thing we believe they're focusing on. Now, this is my opinion. I don't know everything, so I want to put that out there for everybody to know. Um, but this is really what I believe happening. We, we have you know, our users, I get to see the data. People give out tons and tons of promos all the time, but they're not breaking the rules. They're not using bots and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. No one has any problems anywhere uh, that hasn't been doing anything sketchy already. Yeah. No, that's interesting. I mean, it's when people are making that much money on Amazon, there's always going to be sort of those shady practices that people are following. Like you mentioned, using bots. I I wasn't really familiar with that, but that does not surprise me at all. When there's that much money involved, of course, people are going to try and game the system as much as they can. Absolutely. Um, So, so yeah, I mean, I think uh, what we talked about, you know, giving away 20 products or 50 products or even more is really not what this change in the terms of service is geared towards. 
um, you know, th that that's normal business practice, I think. Um, so just wanted to mention that because a lot of people have been talking about it and, and thinking that perhaps it's a bigger deal than it is. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as launching product, do you have any other tips for launching a product and uh, getting it to do to do well? Anything else that we haven't talked about quite yet? Yeah. So, so my my formula is pretty much what we've said so far. You know, optimize your stuff, your keywords, um, get your product reviews, get these sales coming in, uh, and then I do two other things. Once I have about fifteen reviews at least, and hopefully they're good reviews, um, I turn on Amazon's PPC. Uh, and Amazon's PPC is incredibly easy to use, and for a lot of keywords, it's incredibly effective. So they have like, you know, built in ROI tracking ready right there. And this also has an added benefit that's been tested time and time again, pretty much of it improves your search engine rankings in Amazon. You turn on the PPC and it improves your search engine rankings and gets you direct sales. Uh, so it's a no brainer, mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't work for all products. You know, I've had a product where I was pretty much breaking even with PPC, but I've had other products to where I think I, it cost me like 3%. Um, you know, I, I'm making oh, wow. basically, yeah, it's just, in, just insane amounts of ROI on this stuff. Uh, some of, I think I had one recently I checked and I had spent $160 over the last month and it made thousands. It, it was just crazy. <laughs> um, but it doesn't, it doesn't work like that for all products. Um, but so the Amazon PPC, definitely turn it on. I, I use something like Term Explorer. As I mentioned before, mm -hmm. I use the AMC tracker keyword tools. I use all these things to just spit out tons and tons of keywords and load them into Amazon. Um, now, I'm not a PPC ninja, so there might be better ways to do it. Uh, this is just what I do. Um, and I wrote a post on my forum about how I do it if you want to check it out. Um, and then also, I rank my Amazon product pages in Google. This is a super awesome way to get a lot of traffic. Uh, uh -huh. Because yeah. talk about an authoritative domain that you could. Yeah. And you don't have to be super white hat either. There's all kinds of, I oh, can't believe I want to tell this, but I'm going to. <laughs> so, uh, so you can, you can be pretty aggressive with these Amazon pages. I will say, use it, you know, for you, for you gray hatters out there, using stuff like GSA, um, and these, these, you know, really crappy blasts, they don't tend to work as well on Amazon. Um, so don't, don't try that. But, you know, manufacturing a lot of links, um, even the PBNs, which I know you're not a fan of, all this stuff. Like it, it tends to work really well on Amazon. Um, now here's the secret. Let's say you get, uh, penalized. And as far as I know, I've never gotten anything manually penalized that's on Amazon, but I think I got like hit in a filter a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to your, to your Amazon product title and you rewrite it a few times and you rewrite it enough times and the URL slug, the canonical URL slug is going to change. Ah. That so it gives you a fresh slate in Google, <laughs> just like that, just like that. So that's it, awesome, man. That's it's really awesome. That's um, that's actually a really good tip. And I, I mean, I can't say I've thought I've thought about this in in passing, but I haven't done anything yet with my product listings. Um, but I need to do that. So to clarify for people, I think most people got what you're saying there. But just to clarify, he's uh, we're, we're talking about ranking in ranking your. Amazon product page in Google. And so doing a lot of SEO like you would for your own site, building links to your actual Amazon product page and then taking advantage of that uh, natural search engine traffic on Google. So yes, that's... Uh, well, the one last tip, the one last tip with that is um, there will frequently already be Amazon pages in the search results for if your keywords are kind of targeted around that, mm -hmm. at least in my health terms. Uh, but Google only likes to rank maybe one or two pages from the same domain at a time. Um, so you might start building links, and you're not going to see anything like the top 300 in Google, and you'll you'll be a little scared. Just keep keep doing it, and then eventually it'll just pop up all at once, and you'll take over. Um, that's that's how it always happens with ranking in Google. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, that's awesome. That's uh, yeah, just I mean, it's another source of traffic that uh, people could be potentially be tapping into. Um, and I hadn't planned on asking this, but I just thought of uh, this because I'm thinking about taking my Amazon products. They're all based in the U S now. I'm thinking about expanding, you know, into Canada or other countries, you know, doing 
FBA out of uh, international Amazon uh, marketplaces. Have have you done that? And if so, how's that going? All right. So I, I have not done it, okay. but I've obviously seen all the data because I have more data than anyone alive when it comes to Amazon. <laughs> um, besides Amazon themselves, obviously. Uh, Canada sucks. Okay. Um, <laughs> most things. Um, to put it bluntly, so I even tracked. So I was interested. I was like, well, you know, Amazon's making it easier to take it up there. Uh, so I tracked the supplements. And talking about supplements that have a, a seller rank of like 500, which if you don't know, that's really good. Mm-hmm. If you're a 500 in the U.S., you are making bank. Um, and in in Canada, they were selling like one or two a day. <laughs> um, it's just much, much lower volume. You know, a lot of the Canadians, I, f- I believe, are ordering from the U.S. Amazon, shipping it up there. And maybe it's just supplements. Maybe, you know, the Canadians don't like the pills as much as we do. Yeah. Uh, Any other international, you know, UK or Australia? UK, or? All right, UK is awesome. Okay. Um, Japan right now is awesome. If you if you can get in Japan, do it. And they even have language services since, you know, most of us aren't speaking Japanese. They have uh, language services to help out with this. Um, Germany is a really big market. Uh, those those are the three that I would hit up the most. In Australia, it's, it's nothing. Like uh, my co-founder is Australian and he doesn't really, he can't get anything from Amazon there. Hmm. Is, is there any uh, resources you can point people to as far as figuring out what markets might work internationally, or is that just all private data that you have? Um, I mean, you can, you can track it yourself so you can, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So we, we have a, we have a sales tracker thing mm-hmm. an AMZ tracker. You just kind of put in the product and click track and come back a week later and look at the data. It works for some products, not all, unfortunately. Um, and you and you can see how much they're selling and do the math yourself, or we do the math for you actually in the product. Um, that's that's the best way. I'm I'm not really knowledgeable. I don't I haven't ventured there myself enough. Yeah, no, I think that's good though. Actually, I I forgot about that. That you could go in and track it yourself within AMZ Tracker. So that's uh, no, that's a good tip. So let's go ahead and shift the discussion maybe away directly from Amazon FBA and talk about AMZ Tracker itself. Um, the business behind that. So when did you start it and why did you start it? We started just about one year ago. Um, I think we started coding maybe a year and a couple months ago and had our first sell about one year ago exactly. Uh, it, it originally started as a keyword tracker. That was it. Just like um, a SERP tracker in Google to know where your keywords rank. Uh, and I, this is, again, I was scratching my own itch. So I got on Amazon um, I'm doing all this SEO stuff, and I'm having to manually check every single keyword to see where I ranked. Um, it was just—it was insane. It was silly, and I'm used to all these awesome Google tools. And so I, I hook up with my co-founder, who we'd we'd worked together in various projects over the years, and we started coding this thing out. Um, and so I was just scratched my own itch at first, and then we just started adding all these extra features. And these features were things that I was doing to rank my products. And that we figured out ways we could automate and make it easier, and it just it just rolled from there. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. I mean, it's one of those things. Like I said, I have been using it. I actually started using it to track the rankings of my Kindle books on Amazon. Uh-huh. That's actually originally why I signed up. Is uh, yeah, just to track the sales and, and rankings of my Kindle books. Uh, and then, of course, I've moved on to. Uh, Amazon products now. So, I mean, if, if people want to go and check it out, I am an affiliate for this. They can go to nichepursuits.com slash AMZ tracker. Um, like I said, it's something that I've been using and uh, I actually like quite a bit. Um, can you give us an idea other than what we've mentioned? We've mentioned, of course, the keyword tracking and the uh, review club that's there on AMZ tracker. What other features are there? in the product itself yeah yeah so uh we have a a negative review tracker so it's it's a one-click notification thing you put your product in you click track and anytime your product gets a negative review you'll get a little notification a warning showing you it's there just an easy way if you want to go and um try and take care of it uh as in like maybe you know reach out if you can figure out who the seller is or maybe who the buyer was um trying to make them happy um, respond, you know, just normal customer service stuff. It makes it easy. Uh, we have a on-page analyzer. Um, this is basically a tool to help make sure your on-page SEO for your Amazon listing is is as it should be. 
Uh, make sure your keywords are in all the right places. You're using the right number of characters. You're using uh, the right number of images, the right types of images. The size of images are important on Amazon. All that stuff. Uh, we make it just easy. You just click a button and you're done. Um, also, keyword research tools. You know, it's taking all of Amazon's uh, keywords that are actually in there. And then a, a super URL tool, which is, how do we say the super URL tool? I would say it's like the equivalent of backlinks for Amazon is the best way to say it. It, um, it, it mimics, so when you give to our product reviewers, or you can put these special URLs um, in like YouTube videos, your blogs, and when somebody clicks it, it takes them to Amazon, and it mimics uh, somebody going to Amazon and searching your keyword. So if somebody goes and just clicks this URL and purchases, and it mimics that they searched for iPhone 6 case first, um, if that makes sense. It's hard to describe over audio. Yeah, no, it, well, it makes sense, I guess, to me, because I know what you're talking about, but I think that was a good description. Um, so huh. can you give us an idea of how that business is doing, the actual AMZ tracker? You've had it for about a year and anything you're comfortable sharing, either revenue numbers or maybe user base or anything else? Yeah, I, I can't give um, exact numbers because, you know, I have I have partner and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's grown very large. I mean, it's grown large enough that I've I've put most of my time into this business. And, and it's one, it's kind of, it's fun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's a, I find it more fun than some of my other businesses right now because it's growing so rapidly. And you get to see... Uh, so many people are getting massive life-changing results in like a, a fairly short amount of time, which is just cool to see. Uh, and it's my first venture into SaaS as well. I've never done SaaS until now. Uh, it's it's been a really fun ride, and uh, applying all the all the skills that I've built up over the years and all these other products, and and now applying them to SaaS is it's been a great ride. It's been really effective too. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense that you're not able to share uh, specific numbers, but safe to say that it's doing well. Um, can you give us an idea of how you've grown the business? I mean, what has been your most effective way to grow your customer base? All right. Uh, I have to pick what I say because I know some of my competitors are going to listen to you. <laughs> um, yeah, and they're, they're good guys. They really are. Some of my competitors are just great dudes that we talk in the back end all the time. Uh, SEO has been a really big win, mm -hmm. obviously. I mean, if I wasn't good at that, then I'd be doing something wrong. Um, word, word of mouth is... At the end of the day, word of mouth has actually been the best thing for this. We just we solved such a problem with this software that people talked about it everywhere. Um, th those have been the best ways. I have all kinds of other stuff, but I know they're listening, so I just can't say. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. No, that's okay. Um, I I mean, and, and if I were to jump in, I mean, it, of course, it starts with just building a great product, I think, and you've done that. Um, That's what it you know, is. Yeah. When you, when you have a great product, all these other things, of course, SEO and word of mouth, um, and whatever other strategies you may be employing, it uh, if you don't have that really great product, all those other things aren't quite as effective. But uh, um, so, congrats on the AMZ tracker business. Thanks, um, man. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I, I use it. If people want to check it out, it's nichepursuits.com/slash AMZ tracker. Um, to kind of wrap things up, is there anything else that we haven't talked about already, whether that is for the Amazon FBA business or any additional tips for if somebody wants to grow their own software business? Just any um, any other tips that you're willing to share with us today? Uh, on a spot like that, I don't think I have anything cool. I feel kind of like a <laughs> letdown to say it like that, but I don't, I don't know. No, that's okay. I think you've shared uh, quite a bit here, and I know there's – a ton of value. I think it, I mean, it just goes back to the fact that Amazon is a huge marketplace and whether people are doing supplements or they're selling some other product, there's just a lot of people buying on Amazon and there's a lot of things that we can actively do to market our businesses properly and market our products properly on Amazon. And so I think you've yeah. shared uh, a lot of great tips here. I, I can close with this two things that, uh, Building an Amazon business um, can be just about the same amount of hassle as building, you know, some of these niche sites and affiliate sites and drop shipping and all this stuff. It can be the same amount of hassle, except you're creating a real brand and a real business from it. Um, 
And I've seen it time and time again. It can sometimes be even easier. Uh, and also that the, the intent behind people in, on Amazon is so much different than you're going to get anywhere else in the world pretty much. So I always say like if people are on Facebook, you know, they're coming to look at like pictures of their exes and just, you know, like baby pictures or whatever else. Like, and you see these ads on the side and they're, you know, sometimes they'll click them and sometimes people can make them work really well. Uh, but that's not what they're there for. And when people go to Google, um, they are doing informational queries. They're learning about something. You know, what's the best iPhone 6 case? That type of stuff. But when people go to Amazon, they're there for one thing. They're there to buy. And on top of that, Amazon has crafted this ecosystem that um, incentivizes them even more. Their credit card information is already saved. They have Prime, so they can get free shipping in two days. And if you're in some cities, you can get it within hours. Like all this stuff, they have you know reviews in place, uh, so it's just so easy to create massive businesses um, in a relatively short amount of time. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been blown away personally with my own business. I started my Amazon FBA business about six months ago, really just kind of on a whim. I thought I'd throw a product up there. Everybody else was talking about all this great success. I put up my first product, and it was an almost instant hit. I mean, it took me a little while to get it up, you know, a month or so and um, to get it yeah. selling. But I, here I am six months later, and um, I guess I won't share the revenue just now. But it's it's growing very, very rapidly and has been the fastest business I've ever grown, period. Yeah. Uh, so there's to be able to replace somebody's typical income from a job can be a two-month process if it's done right. You know, it, it the, you can't get those kind of results anywhere else. Yeah. And I know, I mean, you can, but hell, I don't know what it is. So, and I, I have more marketing experience than most people, and I don't know how to do that either. Yeah, no, it's it's amazing. Um, I'm loving the Amazon FBA ride uh, right now, and so I appreciate you, Travis, coming on and sharing some of your tips uh, for that business, and and sharing a little bit more about the AMZ Tracker uh, business as well. If people want to get in touch with you or just follow along with you, where's the best place uh, they should go? Uh, we have a, a forum on AMZ Tracker. It's like community.amztracker.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Travis underscore Jameson, or just Google me. And you'll find some stuff on there. So Supremacy SEO, if you want to hear SEO ramblings, there's all kinds of places you can find me. Absolutely. No, that sounds good. Hey, just uh, want to thank you once again for uh, coming on the podcast. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's been all my pleasure. And just to everybody listening in, um, hopefully you can take some of these tips that we've shared and apply that into your own business. And just best of luck in your business as well. Absolutely. Absolutely.